Land pollution occurs when humans bring dangerous objects, chemicals, or substances into the soil either directly or indirectly in a way that harms other living organisms or damage the soil or water ecosystem. Furthermore, land pollution can severely disrupt agricultural activity, resulting in the widespread use of synthetic chemicals, fertilizer, and agrochemicals, which contribute to pol pollution. Aside from that, Mining activity, urbanization, and nuclear waste are easily contribute to polluted and have a negative impact on human health. In Sabah, land contamination happens every day because rubbish is commonly discovered on the beaches of Toluk Awamnikas. Waste management is a topic of controversy. Tourists and locals find it challenging to enjoy or jog there because of the rubbish. Land pollution has emerged as one of the most severe issues. Land pollution in other senses is the destruction or degradation of the earth's surface and soil caused by human activity whether it is done directly or indirectly. And landslide can be considered as an illustration of the effect of land degradation. In Sabah, landslide often occur not only in forest areas but also occur in urban areas where these landslides can sometimes cause road damage such as road collapsing due to landslides. In addition to landslides, flash floods also occur frequently. Human-induced activities are carried out in the name of development and this has a significant impact on the environment as seen by land pollution. By radical, we mean any action that decreases the quality or productivity of the land as an excellent location for forestry, agriculture building and so on. Land pollution is the contamination of land that could be utilized constructively. Furthermore, the expansion of urban areas owing to the rising population leads to increased utilization of available land. Moreover, the absence of green spaces affects the land in a variety of ways, including soil degradation, which dissolves the productive area of the ground. However, on the other hand, the utilization of pesticides among gardeners can also affect the quality of the land, since the pesticide is a substance that is used specifically for the purpose of controlling pests, but it can harm plants. The usage of a huge amount of pesticides will harm not only the land, but also the water. Thus, in general, pesticides are designed to be damaging, yet humans still utilize them nowadays. The next issue is littering. Littering pollutes the ecosystem and reduces the usage, pleasure, and quality of public spaces, leaving our communities to seem unclean and neglected, unpleasant to be in, and much less likely to be utilized and cherished. Litter thrown on the street, on the side of the road, or in the bushes can be swept or carried into rivers and streams, damaging the land, waterways, and ocean ecosystems. For example, littering in Taman Awam Teruklika, Sen Tanjung Aru Beach at Kota Kinabalu Sabah, where the trashes are too visible to be ignored. These places are the most visited places in Kota Kinabalu by both locals and tourists, as it is among Sabah's popular attractions. Not only in this kind of place, but even in the city center, little bugs still exist discarding rubbish carelessly. Littering may also cause significant injury and distress to the animals that become entangled in, are hurt by, or swallow discarded rubbish, as well as enable the spread of illness and pest infestation inside the communities. It can be one of the reasons why flash flood happens as the rubbish is blocking the waterways and causing the water to flood. Littering costs the community thousands of ringgits in trash management and cleanup costs each year that could otherwise be spent for critical community infrastructure or services. Other than that, the issue of solid waste management. For instance, in Kota Kinabalu, Sabah, solid waste management emerged as a reason that contributes to the polluted environment. This is evidenced by the fact that the Sabah local authorities, notably Kota Kinabalu City Hall, are still battling to solve concerns such as indiscriminate waste disposal, growing waste creation, and landfill difficulties. Moreover, as cities continue to grow larger, solid waste management in Sabah is also turning into a serious environmental and public health issue as the volume of solid waste creation would continue to rise until the government, local authorities, and the related parties enhance their collaboration in planning effective solid waste management. 
Despite the fact that Kota Kinabalu City Hall has repeatedly conducted various programs for many years, solid waste management issues still remain, even though Kota Kinabalu City Hall's activities and campaigns demonstrate that the organization's primary focus is on hygiene, public health and sanitation in order to combat solid waste management issues. The absence of systematic or holistic ways to resolve the issue of solid waste management in Kota Kinabalu has restricted the state government's capability to tackle the problem properly. This has resulted in a variety of environmental difficulties such as irresponsible rubbish disposal and increase in the amount of waste, unpleasant odor from landfills and potentially deadly disease such as leptospirosis. The first suggestion is we need to start planting more trees. Land pollutions that are occurring now are the effect from deforestation and urbanization that occurring widely nowadays. This had caused the increasing of land pollution. Therefore, we need to start planting to help in increasing the fertility of soil that are reducing because of deforestation and urbanization. Planting trees are not only important to curb land pollution but also to increase the oxygen level for our surrounding that will help all the living things. The government must show support and encouragement by creating campaign such as Go Green campaign that encourage the society to plant trees for a healthier environment. The society needs to change the behavior for the sake of protecting their environment. The government also playing an important role to slow down the deforestation and urbanization program to reduce land pollution and let the tree grow. This is because deforestation and urbanization will wash away nutrients that help the trees to grow and will make it difficult. They must have balanced activity to maintain a healthier environment. Besides that also, to overcome land pollution, the next suggestion is to focus on reuse material method. Reuse material method can be understood as the method of which society or human living that reduce the waste management such as rubbish and house waste that will cause land pollution. This is one of the ways that will help to restore a healthy environment in a much easier way that need the effort from all of the society. In order to get support from the society, the government must also encourage them by making campaign and creating more recycled places such as recycle bin and recycle house. This will gain the attention from all of the society. Society can start by reuse of material, old material rather than throwing things away and create pollution. For example, society can reuse old tires to be used as a planting pot such as flowers and tree. This will give benefits to the environment and reduce the land pollution. The government can also encourage the society to apply the concept of, of 3R that is reduce, reuse and recycle in their everyday life. For instance, the government will conduct activity that related with 3R, reduce, reuse and recycle to gain the interest and knowledge to the society about the importance of taking care of the environment for a better future. Other than that, Suggestion to overcome land pollution is by cutting down the use of pesticides on land. Pesticides are known as a chemical that is used especially for the purpose of planting to control pests that will damage the plant. The usage of large amount of pesticides will not only damage the land but also will damage the water as well. Pesticides are intended harmful. The society, especially those working as a farmer or gardener, must always consider before using pesticides in their process of planting. In order to overcome this problem, it requires the involvement of important bodies such as Kementerian Pertanian dan Perikanan Malaysia and all the society to overcome this issue. The government body must find a suitable chemical to be used in order to stop the usage of pesticides that will damage the land. For example, Kementerian Pertanian dan Perikanan Malaysia must invent or supply the farmers and gardener with a suitable chemical to be used by the farmer or gardener to replace the pesticides that is more eco-friendly and will not damage the environment. This will also create 
a good product that is eco-friendly to be introduced outside Malaysia. Last but not least, the suggestion to overcome land pollution are by waste management treatment method. As we come to increasing of infrastructure and development of surrounding, it may be impossible to prevent from pollution happening because it is all over the world. Therefore, waste management are one of the useful solution to be used nowadays with the use of improving technology. Waste treatment are method that is used for treating waste such as chemical before disposed as it will reduce its toxic and reduce the harm towards environment and land. For this solution, the government are playing important role in creating more waste treatment factory using the advantage of improving technology in order for this method to be conducted successfully. One of the lessons that can be learned is the importance of source reduction or waste reduction. It also refers to the process of minimizing trash at its source. Before recycling, waste reduction helps to reduce waste production. It contributes to reducing trash disposal and handling expenses because it avoids recycling, composting, and landfilling. At different levels, waste reduction can be accomplished by lowering the amount of waste produced per person through initiatives in public policy and education. So that is why the knowledge and information regarding the waste management is very important especially among the household. This is because most households would dispose of waste if they couldn't tell whether it was recyclable or not. Thus, providing knowledge and information help them to identify which product can be recyclable and given the information about the consequences of their action toward the environment lead them to reduce waste disposal and help to extend the life of the landfill. The percentage of recycling contribution is important in estimating landfill life, which will not only create a healthier environment and reduce pollution, but it will also set on new land exploration for the construction of new landfill. Another lesson learned is the importance of the 3R rule. Everyone has a legal and moral obligation to reduce waste and dispose of waste in the most environmentally. The three R principle help to improve waste management and reduce the human ecological footprint. It promotes economic activity, reduce environmental impact from waste disposal, prevent resources loss and extend landfill operating. As a consumer, we can save the world's resources by following the three R's namely reduce, reuse, and recycle. Resources that eventually run out are referred to as finite resources. For instance, there is a limit to the amount of oil that can be used to make plastic. By practicing the three R's, we can conserve finite resources and reduce the amount of waste that in up at landfill. There are numerous methods for reducing, reusing, and recycling waste at home. For instance, overpacking goods, reuse carrier bags, and take the waste paper to the recycling center. To respond to long-term policy development by combining the goals and objectives of the state, community and business, policymakers in developing nations must build their institutional capacity to transform their fundamental waste management plan into effective three R best policies. Developing countries may seek to combine it with the promotion of international collaboration. In addition, to eliminate pollution, the government and organizations must both put in significant effort. It must, however, also include contributions from the citizen by making minor adjustments to daily routines, 
citizen can limit the amount of land pollution caused by the environment by switching to biodegradable products instead of non-biodegradable ones because they are simpler to dispose of and generally safer for the environment.